on today's edition of Fixing the Money Thing. We're talking about a very exciting mm -hmm. concept, money mysteries from the master. Jesus spoke about time-honored truths that deal with your finances. Absolutely. And we want those to come to you so that you can unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of God, which will affect your finances and your family. Absolutely, absolutely will. Yes. I'm telling you, you know, stay right here because the answers that changed our life are in these mysteries we're talking they about. Are. From the Faith Life Now studio, Gary and Drenda discuss the money mysteries Jesus solved for us today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, I want my people free. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life defeated his debt, and set him free. You'll never find your destiny until you fix the money thing. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda. We're so glad you joined us today. We're talking about a very exciting mm. concept, money mysteries from the master. Jesus spoke about time-honored truths that deal with your finances. Absolutely. And we want those to come to you so that you can unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of God, which will affect your finances and your family. Absolutely. Absolutely will. Yes. These are not mysteries to us, the believer, Jesus has given them to us. We have to dig them out. The Holy Spirit revealed these mysteries during it, but once, I mean, they're all there. They are. I mean, they are, and they're prosper, very exciting. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing yes. stuff. And the book, of course, talks about uh, the, a lot of the mysteries that God taught us. We came out of nine years of severe financial dysfunction, judgments, liens, panic attacks, uh, you know, antidepressants. Uh, there wasn't much joy in that, that sense. That was pretty tough. But God spoke to me one day when I got desperate after nine years and said, you don't understand how my kingdom operates. You need to have a little revelation of how life's supposed to be lived, basically. And he began to teach us the kingdom and the mysteries of life that operate in the kingdom of God. And we were out of debt very quickly, uh, we become millionaires, uh, began to launch businesses, uh, able to give hundreds of thousands of dollars to projects, uh, around the world and here nationally, and our life changed. Mm -hmm. And it changed very, very quickly. And we were, I don't know about you, but I was, I was pinching myself the whole time. It's like, right. really? That just happened? Yes. Really? That just it's happened? It's like you said, it's like we flipped a switch on yes. or unlocked a door. And then behind that door were all these incredible things that God mm -hmm. wants for his people. They're not just for Gary and Drenda because see, they're That's for right. you. God wants them for you. He showed us in our place of need. We cried out to him and said, if you'll show us, God, we'll spend our life sharing with others what you told That's us, right. what you shared with us. And that's what we're doing today. So, Gary, I love today what we're talking about. It's yeah, exciting. We're talking about these mysteries. The mystery of the assignment. I mean, Drenda, I mean, we were so dysfunctional. We got to the place we were, I was afraid to leave the house. I mean, so if you're listening today and you're in financial chaos, I'm just, or if you need to, you know, move on to greater things and you don't know what to do next, I'm telling you, you know, stay right here because the answers that changed our life are in these mysteries we're talking they about. They are. Let's get into them. I know okay. everybody wants to. I want to. Yes. So, Gary, you talk about, let's go to chapter 9, the mystery of the assignment. Mm -hmm. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its grape? Who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk? 1 Corinthians 9, 7. So, what is the mystery of the assignment? Well, to understand the mystery of the assignment, you just basically kind of read a little synopsis of it, and that is when you're on assignment, whose responsibility is it to take care of you? The person that sent you on the assignment. Exactly. So when you're on assignment with the kingdom, God has given you a directive. He's going to make things happen for you and take care of you. But to have that happen, we need to understand how the kingdom operates and so I call this chapter the mystery of the assignment because there's some things you need to know how God thinks when he gives us an assignment to actually take part in what can benefit your life as we do so. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 25 and let's talk about one of these assignments. In fact, there's a story here that's probably very famous to most people, and that is the parable of the talents. Right. And I've heard so many interpretations mm -hmm. of this, Gary, but you give it a... Uh, God gave you some revelation on this that I think is very, very helpful to really understand what it's saying. 
Yeah. Well, it's pretty simple in the beginning. There's an owner, a master that sends his servants. Uh, the master's leaving town, and so he gives his servants an assignment. Uh, to one, he gives five talents. That's a measure of money, a certain amount of five talents of wealth. And to one, two talents, and to the other, one talent. And he leaves and expects those guys to go and do business on behalf of his company and to increase in profit. Now, the Bible says that the one, one thing I need to add here, it says, very important, he says, he gave them the assignment based on their ability. Notice the difference. One got five, right. As a one good got business two, would. one got one. Mm -hmm. So he had a level of trust at that level for right. each of these employees. The one, as the story goes, the five, when he came back, the master gave, they got an account from these guys. The one that had the five now had 10. Ten. So he doubled the, uh, the, the talent. Right. The one that had two now has four. Right. And the one that had one still had one. We'll talk about him in a minute. But the point I'm making is the one that had five now had 10. Now here's the secret. Here's the mystery the master knows that people miss so much of the time. What kind of assignment? Now the Bible says he gave them the assignment based on their ability. So you would assume that the master gave the employee in a, a five talent assignment because he is a five talent guy, right? You have five talents. This is your level of responsibility. It's according to your ability. You, you've managed five talents. I can trust you with five talents. But the purpose of managing the five talents is not to hold the five talents, but to increase. Not correct? to stay where he was. That's correct. But to increase. So here's the, here's the question of the mystery. Did the employer give the employee a five talent assignment or a 10 talent assignment as what he ended up with? Hmm. 10 talent. 10 talent, because the assignment had the potential to capture 10 talents. So we know that the, the, the assignment was bigger than their current level of ability, but in the master's mind, that their ability to stretch, he didn't gauge it by their ability to stay stagnant. Right. The guy didn't become a five talent guy by doing nothing. So he judged the assignment by this guy's ability not to manage, but to take new territory, increase, and figure it out. Does that make right. sense? Yes, yes. To change it, to invest it, to, change to become it. more, yes. to make more, to do more. Let me say a nasty word. It's <laughs> called pressure, okay? How many times have we heard Christians say, I launched into something and then all, all hell broke loose, and they ask a question, they say, I must have missed God. Right. That's very typical. Very typical. All this pressure. I got to get out of this pressure when God's actually calling us into the pressure. God actually <laughs> calls you into the pressure. A wise master. Not, now, he says he'll never tempt you more than you can stand. The Bible does tell us that. But God, the wise master, understands that if you step into to an assignment that is bigger than you, then you're going to stretch. Right. So the guy that had five now has 10. He now is a 10 talent guy. He can manage 10 talents because he knew how he got them. He stretched, he got what he needed. He had to figure out, you know. He worked with it. He had to hire more, <laughs> uh, you know, he had to learn more data. He had to learn something else that he didn't already know to Invested. build that five to 10. But now that he built it, he knows how he built it. And he's a 10 talent right. guy. Right. And not only can he build it, he now can manage it. He can manage it. Because he it. took yeah. ownership of it That's at the right. five talents and worked it up to the 10 talents. So his values increased. Yes. The, the profits increased. His management's increased. Yes. Everything is increased. Yes. And so this is the mystery. It's the mystery of the assignment. God gives us things that are always bigger than us because he never expects us to do it on our own, first off. Right. It's going to do it together, but he is interested in stretching. And what stretches a balloon? Pressure. pressure. And pressure is the tool used by the master to actually increase our capacity to handle more responsibility, thus bringing more value to us as people. That's great. That's great. He didn't quit. That so many times people quit when there's pressure today. Maybe you don't want to hear that, but this may be a timely word for you. Don't quit. 
Don't quit when there's pressure. Don't quit when you feel like it. Don't quit when your five talent that God gave you, this pressure to increase your mm -hmm. business or increase your life, change your legacy, change your finances. When you engage the process, just like when the uh, Israelites left Egypt, there was pressure. And many of them begged and wanted to go back to Egypt where they were slaves. We don't yeah. want to be slaves. We've been called into freedom and into a covenant and to liberty. But there, with that freedom, there is given some requirement, right? Where much is given, there is a requirement. Exactly right. And it's worth it. It's worth it. So don't quit when you're under pressure, when there's pressure there. And really, the guy with the one talent, he really did quit, didn't he? Well, we're going to talk about him in just yeah. a minute. When we come back in just a minute, I want to talk more about the one talent guy. Right. I want to talk more about this process of pressure so that you'll be encouraged by it. Not right. afraid of it. Yes. When we come right back here on Fixing the Money Thing. It's time to defeat your debt and discover your destiny. Well, this is your financial revolution. Friday, January 26th and Saturday, January 27th, Gary will be at Hope of the Generations Church in Thomaston, Georgia to host his groundbreaking financial revolution conference. Don't miss this opportunity to see firsthand how the kingdom of God can operate in your life. You will never discover your destiny and your purpose until you fix the money thing. I love Money Mysteries from the Master because it's actually Jesus giving us the keys. They're ancient truths, they're His Word, keys to our life, to our finances, to being blessed and living a blessed life, a good life. And Gary, so many people don't see that. They don't mm -hmm. understand the no, goodness of God don't. and unlock these mysteries. And on the surface, they can almost seem sometimes like, I don't get that, Jesus. What were you talking about? When you push a little deeper, there's so many truths there. So we're talking about uh, the mystery of the assignment yeah, powerful, and the powerful pressure. Principle that makes people want to quit. God doesn't want them to quit. So many people start and stop, start and stop, start their whole life mm -hmm. just because pressure comes and pressure is going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. If you know it, you're mm -hmm. ready for it, you can persevere through it yeah, to get to the pressure, 10 talents. Always pressure. And so that's a good, uh, let's talk about pressure for a minute. Sure. Because pressure can be negative or positive. And if you take the pressure and you internalize it as negative, you become negative, discouraged, complainer, and you, you lock yourself in a descending cycle of life. Right. Now, the answer to pressure is a plan. So let me say that. You're, the answer to pressure, in mm -hmm. other words, to come out of pressure, back, quitting does not alleviate pressure. No, it doesn't. It the, just the creates price, another whole pressure. The price pressure. of failure is pressure, right. uh, pressure that's not good. Right. So, yeah. What you're talking about, though, I think is what people, it, their pressure becomes stress. There's a difference in pressure and stress. We all have pressure. It's debilitating. But stress is when we take it on ourselves to carry it out. We worry about it. We complain about it. Uh, we get negative about it. So how mm -hmm. does that pressure work for us? How do all we right, keep it from good. becoming stress? Okay, someone who has an, an entrepreneurial mindset, let's say, they view pressure as an opportunity. Right. Okay, because wherever there's a problem, there's a opportunity for promotion or creation, right? Right. So if you have the wrong mindset of survival, in a survival mindset, you don't want pressure because you want to stay, you want to find a quiet place of seclusion just to kind of live life. But God's not called us to live life that way. We're on the front lines and we are to take territory, but pressure demands an answer. All right. So I always say frustration is the greeting brown of change. Pressure demands an answer. You'll either answer it positively, engaging it, or you will back off and it'll keep pressing you back into a corner. But as a believer, we don't have to be afraid of pressure because we know that God is with us, as you said, the Spirit of God's in us, and we can then think different in terms of reward. Okay. So if there's pressure, we can win that battle and we can take more territory, more responsibility, bigger paychecks, right. a greater life. So pressure is the breeding ground of change. That's correct. Makes us make a strategy or change yes, what strategy. we're doing. Yes. Uh, just like when you shared about David and Goliath, uh, that there is to be a strategy. There's pressure when there's a giant standing before yeah, you, there's, there's pressure. a mountain always standing before be, you. Jesus said be. you speak to that mountain. Yeah, so how, how we engage the mountain, the mountain's not going to go away. It just be, we're just there, we're facing it. Yeah. Uh, it we can't walk away from it. It takes a plan. Okay, you mentioned David and Goliath. He had a supernatural plan, not the armor of Saul, but the sling caught Goliath off mm -hmm. guard. For instance, money. Let's say that you need money and you would say, okay, Gary, I need money. You need a plan. Money is a result 
of a plan. It is not a goal in itself. It is the result of a plan. For instance, we use this in our conferences. If I told you I could solve your money problems, easy. We could tell you right now on TV, get your pencil ready, make or net, right now, net $5 million over the next 12 months. For most people, most people, that would take care of their financial problems. But then people are looking at me right now. I can't see you, but I know you're looking at me thinking, $5 million, me, me, that that the pictures don't match, okay, and that be your problem. Because if you can't see yourself with five million, you can't have five million. But here's how you see five million. It's called a plan. For instance, if I owned an export company and I told you, Drenda, I'm gonna pay you a thousand dollars, and this is just an illustration, not reality, a thousand dollars to wrap this ball in a box and I'm gonna ship it, okay? So a thousand dollars, you can do five hundred a day. 500 a day, and I'm going to pay you $1,000 a box. And I would say to you, Drenda, make $5 million. You would say, what? <laughs> yeah, okay, That's I can do simple. it. Absolutely, I'll take that. the job. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take the job. It's a lot, I can make a lot more than that. That's nothing. Right. That's right. easy. That's Unless it's easy. handling radioactive material or something. <laughs> <laughs> but you would say that's easy, right. easy, right. easy, because it only takes four days, no, four, five, ten days at that pay rate right. to make the five million, and you got a whole year. That's right. E what changes that a plan is the in plan place. Plan changes. So when you're under pressure, the Holy Spirit is there as your counselor, like David. Get that unique strategy. The plan is what you need to hear. God has the plan. He yes. knows how to handle it. So you engage the plan. Now remember when Israel came out of Egypt, the Red Sea parted into the deliverance. But that wasn't the only time the water parted. We think of deliverance as being free from problems, free from pressure. Well, that's true. We, have, we are delivered, but delivered means we're heading somewhere. Right, delivered to something. Delivered to something. And if you remember at the River Jordan, when they entered the promised land, they were entering a land of giants and walled cities, and the water parted again. The River Jordan right. was at flood stage. And this time, this miracle of the water parting was to actually basically kick Israel into pressure. Mm. Once was deliverance from slavery, had no options. Mm. They were delivered. But now they're actually being kicked, motivated, moved into pressure on behalf of the kingdom to actually take territory and establish their future. Wow. So this is the process that we come through. We, we're delivered. Then God begins to move us towards trust, really, a, a place and of it, destiny it which has pressure with it. Right. We have to handle that moment at the river of Jordan, if you will, yes. with the understanding that we're not alone. God would not have led us to this point if he was going to leave us. And we are to embrace that opportunity. We may not know how to handle it, but we have God with us and we're going to capture it. Right. And that's, that's the mystery of the assignment is to submit to the pressure, not in fear, but in faith and let God literally change. I mean, we were broke. We were finding quarters to buy Happy Meals for our kids in the cushions of the couch. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we handle millions what changed? We changed. We changed. The we pressure, changed. The ability to, the capacity to carry the pressure, right. to persevere through the pressure, to trust God in the pressure, to keep going forward in the pressure. The Israelites wandered around in the wilderness. They had a slave mentality. They'd only thought of slaves. And really, they just performed what their master yeah, wanted okay. them to perform. So let me ask you a question. Okay, so you're on a, very, a major network with a television broadcast. And you had the thought to start a television show and you thought of doing it on the internet. Right. And you began to talk to some people. Tell me what, tell us what happened. I want to use this as an example, how we step into pressure. Well, I just wanted to share with women opportunities to do things God's way instead of the world's way. The world's pitching a lot of things to women that I call it pitching their wares and women are getting lied to in a lot of fronts in a lot right. of ways. So I wanted to be able to share what we've learned about family and marriage and finances God's way. And I thought, well, I'll do that on the internet. I'll do a program there. And in the process of going to an event where I shared my testimony several times, I was offered the opportunity to put together a pilot. They wanted it in two weeks on a major network. And wow, I mean, that was, I could have easily said, uh, no way. I had no clue. But because of the spirit of the Lord was stirring this on the inside of me, the desire to help women, the call of God caused me when they asked me to do it, to say yes. And I okay. said yes before I even knew the pressure of carrying okay, it Okay, pressure. You didn't have a pilot. 
you didn't have the money to pay for it because it's like three hundred thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands. If I remember, hundreds of thousands of dollars you're to air it to air yes. this program, plus produce the program. And you said, I'll, in two weeks, I'll have the pilot. And so you embraced the pressure, and it was there was pressure then because oh, I was yes. there with you. We did. Yes, I remember that. Me. There was Thank pressure, you. but that program is still on the air today. Mm -hmm. And you now it becomes you right. handle that responsibility. And it's impacting a group of people that no one's talking to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on a network where they're going for secular entertainment. Right. But mm -hmm. God is He's very He's got a strategy. He's He sprinkled that in there. Mm -hmm. So women that are turning on something that don't know God, don't know ex His experiences, don't know His word, don't know understand womanhood, don't understand His plan for right, them right. to empower them as women for His kingdom. They don't understand that. Right. So it's a way to get that seed into their heart in a way that only God would do. So, so. as we close today, I'd like to be on a national network or I'd like to own that. I'd like to do that. I wish I had that. I wish, listen, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. You can dream, but you've got to understand that God will have to lead you to a strategy that's going to be pressure. pressure. <laughs> and so go to GaryCassie.com. A lot of great information there about how to win in life according to the word of God, understand the kingdom. Drend and I would, would invite you to partner with us uh, to help people understand that they can win. That's why we do the broadcast, to help you understand we're nothing special. You can win. If we did it, right. you can. And we'd love to see you on those websites, and we'd love to meet you right yes. here again on Fixing the Money. Yes, thing. and don't bury your talent. God has amazing things for you to do. Just because there's pressure today, it doesn't mean you're, you're being pressed to go away from it or pressed out of it. You're being pressed into a different person. So don't bury your talent like the one that didn't do anything, didn't engage the kingdom. Instead, do what God's called you to do today. You can.